Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. This is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of IRA Financial. I'm here to help you find the answers to the most frequently asked questions from my clients about self-directed retirement accounts. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. I'm Adam Bergman, tax attorney, founder of Ira Financial. And on today's Ad Mail, the final question is from Nikki S. of Mesa, Arizona. And Nikki wants to know, I need to start a solo 401k to take advantage of exemptions for non-recourse loan. I have rental real estate. Can I set up a solo K? So this is a superb question, Nikki. And Nikki, in sum, in short, wants to know, hey, I need to get into a solo 401k. Why? Because there's an exemption under 514c9 that allows 401ks to use a non-recourse loan to buy real estate and pay no UBIT tax or unrelated business income tax, which can travel as high as 37%. So how do you get into a solo K? So it's all about eligibility. Number one, you need to have a business. It could be a self-employed, single member LLC, corp, S corp, doesn't matter. The key is it needs to have a business. Okay, it can't be a hobby. You got to actually try to sell a widget, sell a service, do something. And you cannot have any non-owner employees that work over a thousand hours. And spouses do not count as employees. So if it's me and Jim, me and Jane, as long as just us two and we're the only owners and we have no employees, non-owners that work more than a thousand hours, then we can set up a solo K even if we have a full-time job at Google or Apple or IRA Financial. If I have a side business, I sell Nike Dunks um, or baseball cards on eBay. And even if it only brings in like 500 bucks or thousand bucks a year, still business. I file a Schedule C, maybe I have an S Corp, file an 1120S, um, it's a business. And I can have a solo 401k associated with that business. Now I am capped on how much I can contribute. If I only earn a thousand bucks net, the most I'm gonna be able to contribute probably a thousand bucks minus social security FICA tax, about 12 and a half percent or so, but I'm still eligible for a solo K. Don't have to have a billion dollar business to have a retirement plan. So by doing that, then Nikki can have a solo K, roll her IRA or other 401k pre-tax funds into the solo K and then use that solo 401k to buy real estate and then leverage up that real estate with non-recourse loan and not have to pay the UBTI tax on the leverage, which she would have had to do in a IRA, which does not have an exemption for the UBTI tax under 514C9. That only applies to 401ks or, or tax exempts like churches or um, schools, but not IRAs. Why? Well, I think 401k, they certainly had a stronger lobby than the IRA lobby. And I think ultimately, this 514 C9 was enacted in 1980. I think they just wanted to offer 401k, especially big pension plans, more greater investment opportunities than IRAs. Fair, I don't know. It happened in 1980, I was five years old. What do you want? Uh, but ultimately, Nikki, it's a great opportunity because you leverage works, right? You can ask any smart real estate investor, you make money using leverage, using other people's money. So that is the advantage of using a solo K. The loan must be non-recourse. Why? Because you can't personally guarantee an obligation of your retirement account under 4975C. That triggers a prohibited transaction. Therefore, the loan must be non-recourse. So you go to a bank, a third party, you get a non-recourse loan, you buy the real estate. Let's say you put down 20, 10, 5%. I have some clients that are in the hard money business. They're they able to do deals and put down 5%, right? 95% leverage up, non-recourse. And the goal is then you sell it and you pay back the loan. You have all this huge tax-free growth because you don't have to pay tax since it's a 401k and you don't have to pay the UBTI tax because it's a 401k and not an IRA. So Nikki, superb question. And um, you need to become a business. Now, one last thing I should mention and I want to mention is if you just have real estate income, you're generally a Schedule E taxpayer. E is an Edward that is not eligible for a solo 401k. You need to move the E to C as in Charlie. Because if you're a Schedule C, you're a business. Schedule E, if you look at the form, is passive rental income, passive real estate. There's not subject to self-employment and social security tax, which is good, right? A lot of real estate investors want E 
They don't want C because they get around Social Security and FICA, which is about 12 and a half percent. But if you want to make 401k contributions or be eligible for a 401k, that E is not going to work. You need to be C. So you can shift some of your E money to C and say that part of your management services that you're providing to the E venture. Um, and let's say you have 30 grand or 20 grand, maybe you take five and shift it to Schedule C. So you can set up a solo K, be able to contribute that those funds to the 401k. Yes, those funds would be subject to Social Security and FICA, but on a smaller degree. And you'd also be eligible for the solo, which if you're using leverage, Nikki, it's a home run because you can super leverage up your asset and not pay any tax or UBIT tax. So there you go. Great, great question, Nikki. And thank you so much for it. So that's it. Another ad mill in the bag. Um, if you have questions, shoot it off. Info at our financial on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, hit us up. Uh, I do have a lot in the queue, but if it's a good one, I will sneak it in. I promise. So um, you can just subject it, ad mail or ask Adam. It will get to me. Uh, appreciate your support. Thank you for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, well, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, that's it. Have a great rest of your day. And I will talk to everyone again next week. Be well. 